The start of the truce comes too late for the victims of this attack. With the agreement signed but not yet in force, the busy marketplace in the rebel-held city of Idlib was hit on Saturday, reportedly by Russian jets. Around 100 are thought to have died. Now the people of Syria should finally get some respite from this as a 10-day ceasefire begins. And in the capital Damascus, an emboldened Syrian president made a rare public appearance in a suburb his soldiers have recently retaken from opposition forces. The Syrian state is determined to recover every area from terrorists, Bashar al-Assad said, re-establishing safety and security, rebuilding everything. The ceasefire was brokered by Russia, which backs President Assad, and the US, which backs some of the rebel groups opposed to Assad's government. The truce allows both sides to continue bombing Islamist militants, including so-called Islamic State and groups previously linked to al-Qaeda. But some of those Islamist groups fight alongside US-backed rebels, so even targeted airstrikes against them could weaken the entire rebellion against the Syrian regime. For the opposition, those fears will also surround whether this deal undermines them on the battlefield. They'll have to give up one of the groups which they've been fighting alongside, which they fear will lead to their eventual defeat. Parts of Syria's second city, Aleppo, have been under siege for months, and people there are not convinced the truce will improve their lives. There is nothing here in the markets. They are, they are empty. So I know that there will not be a death by, by bombs, but other difficulties, other deaths by the lack of, for example, medical equipment. Only yesterday, a suburb of Aleppo was attacked. The people of Syria must wait to see if tomorrow really is different. Catherine Jones, 5 News.